Beautiful skies and temperature in the mid-60s. A picturesque day for softball here and a great way to kick off the weekend. You have reached your destination. Big Ten Plus brings you live coverage of this weekend Big Ten series between the Penn State Nittany Lions and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. We welcome you in here to the Rutgers Softball Complex in Piscataway, New Jersey. For the rest of our Big Ten Plus crew, I'm Pat Boyle. So happy to have you with us here. And this is a Penn State team that comes into New Jersey playing some of their best softball of the season. The Nittany Lions 25 and 16 on the year. They are 7-5 and five in the Big Ten, and this is an offense that is heating up at the right time, coming off of a series win last weekend at home against Indiana. Meanwhile, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights looking to snap a losing streak. They enter at 23-24, and 24, a chance to get back to 500. The Scarlet Knights were swept in a midweek doubleheader by Maryland back on Tuesday, but the Rutgers Scarlet Knights and this offense a chance to kickstart a new winning streak here today. It'll be Ashley Hitchcock on the mound to go up against this Nittany Lions lineup. Hitchcock, the junior, her number's on the season, 9-16 and 16, with a 4-2-8 ERA on the year. You see it there, 126 innings, 102 strikeouts. Ashley looking to set the tone for Kristen Butler's Scarlet Knights here this weekend. The first batter to meet her will be the catcher, Cassie Lindmark. Penn State is in the blue tops and the pinstripe pants. Rutgers in the all white. And we are underway at 1.01 p.m. Sixty-four degrees right now. Wind blowing out to left field as it usually does here at the Rutgers softball, Rutgers softball complex. That pitch in there for a strike. Lindmark's numbers on this season right now. She's got the one of the best averages in the Big Ten, fourth in the conference. And she smashes that one into right field to get us started with a base hit. Lindmark hitting 426, seven home runs, 32 RBI. She starts the Nittany Lions off. Here's the rest of the order for Penn State under second year head coach Cassie Crowell. Lynn Mark we just saw with a single. Ali Curl in the DP. Michelle Leone bats third and plays third. Caitlin Morrison will hit cleanup and play second. Lauren Marcotte batting fifth. Maggie Finnegan batting sixth. Liana Jones bats seventh. Lexi Black at first base batting eighth. And Lilia Krauthamel rounds out the lineup. She's the center fielder. First pitch misses to Ali Curland, who is having a historic season. The senior. Hitting 336, 16 home runs, and 38 runs batted in. Both of those top five in the Big Ten. She's out in front of that pitch there, one and one. Carlin's 16 home runs, tied for second most in a single season in Penn State history. She has gotten better and better, and with under the tutelage of Cassie Crowell and the hitting coach Jeff Tilka. It has been a phenomenal year. Couldn't hold up there on the check swing. Count one and two. Swing a chance for two. It's over to Lawson. On to short for Sand for one. The relay throw not in time. So a fielder's choice as Curlin reaches. Here's the defensive alignment for the Scarlet Knights. In the outfield from left to right, it'll be Callaway, Fawcett, and Hura. Peyton Lynn Cavage is at the hot corner. Kylie Sand at short. It'll be Lawson at second base. Kirsten with Stanley's at first. And behind the dish is Katie Winger. First pitch misses to the third baseman, Michelle Leone. Leone, the junior from Pontevedra Beach, Florida. Takes that one up high. Leone on the season. The junior sitting 259, a home run and 16 RBIs. That pitch in there for a strike. 
Ashley pitched in the second game of that doubleheader on Tuesday against Maryland. Ended up going five innings, gave up six hits, four runs, did walk six, but struck out five in the loss. And there for a strike as well. Count back to two and two now. That one misses up high. Leone in the series finale back on Sunday at Nittany Lions Softball Park. Went one for three with an RBI. Payoff pitch, swing and a miss. Hitchcock registers her first strikeout of the day and there's two gone here in the first. So after the leadoff single by Cassie Lindmark, Allie Curlin's over there at first base via the fielder's choice with two outs. Here's the second baseman, Caitlin Morrison. Morrison, the junior from South Park, PA. Swings at the first pitch, loops a soft line drive foul. Morrison's numbers on the season. The junior's hitting 278, no home runs, four RBI. She's been getting a lot more playing time recently. Has been swinging a hotter bat as of recently. Had a couple of hits in the series against Indiana. We mentioned for Rutgers and fourth year head coach Kristen Butler, they got off to their best start in 40 years to start this season. They were red hot in early season play down south. That one's fouled straight back, but a daunting task for the Scarlet Knights to start their Big Ten schedule. They have gone up against four of the top five offenses to start conference play. That included opening conference play against Minnesota. They took two of three from the Gold, or one of three from the Golden Gophers. That one's fouled off. Then ran into Nebraska, who is in the midst of one of the longest winning streaks in the entire country as the Huskers have currently won 18 games in a row. It has vaulted them into the top 25. And then Rutgers had a battle, Indiana, and then last weekend here at home against Illinois, the number one offense in the conference. Swing and a miss, and on second thought, that is called, yeah, swing and a miss, strike three. From home plate umpire Brad Newton, so that's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Ashley Hitchcock to end the first inning. Works around the leadoff single. Welcome back here, folks. A beautiful Friday afternoon and the first half inning in the books here of this three-game weekend set between Penn State and Rutgers. Ashley Hitchcock pitches a scoreless first, and now it's time for the Scarlet Knights offense to meet one of the best pitchers in the Big Ten. It's the senior, Bailey Partial. And she starts Kylie Sand off with a pitch that just misses. Partial, the senior, five foot seven, the lefty from Bell Vernon, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> in the midst of a historic year for the Nittany Lions and head coach Cassie Crowell. Under Clarissa Crowell, Bailey Partial has gotten better and better as her career has gone on. And this season, her numbers are astounding to say the least. 16 and 6 with a minuscule 167 ERA. On the year, she's pitched 150 and two-thirds innings, only 98 hits allowed. Just 21 walks as well and 153 strikeouts. She has been one of the best the Big Ten has had to offer in the running for a first-team all-conference selection if she continues to pitch the way she has all year. And she strikes out Kylie Sand to start the bottom of the first. 
Sand, by the way, who's got the fifth best average in the Big Ten. Goes down looking at her first at bat. Here's another look. Fastball right on the outside corner. Lindmark with a good frame. Here's the rest of the Rutgers starting lineup. Peyton Lynn Cavage bats second. She's at third. Gabby Calloway, the RBI leader in the Big Ten, bats third and is in left. Maddie Lawson clean up at second base. Katie Winger bats fifth behind the dish. Taylor Fawcett's batting sixth. Kirsten with Stanley's in the seven hole. And then it's Megan Herka and Kobe Hura. Herka and Hura to round out the lineup. There's Partial's numbers. And none of those are typos. They are that good. Pitch misses to Lynn Cavage. Peyton the junior from Parker, Colorado on the season, hitting 285, two home runs and 17 runs batted in. Takes a pitch that misses. Partial in her last start, picked up a gritty win, complete game effort in the win on Sunday against Indiana. Seven innings, did give up eight hits and six runs, but it was enough as the Penn State offense gave her eight in the win. In the rubber match in that weekend set, Linkavich loops this one into shallow center. It's gonna drop in for a base hit. So the Scarlet Knights have their first hit of the day. A shallow single from Peyton Linkavich, and that brings up the dangerous Gabrielle Calloway. Another look here. Got a fastball in on her hands, but Linkavich just enough to send that one into shallow center. Crothamel was giving chase, but a runner aboard, and here's the RBI leader in the Big Ten. It's Gabby Calloway. Lefty to lefty. This should be one of the best matchups, if not the best matchup we see all weekend. Callaway, the grad student from Mobile, Alabama, was a transfer before last year from Alabama and has brought her great numbers from the Crimson Tide here to the Scarlet Knights. And she pops this one up just into the outfield grass and it dinks in there again, back-to-back -back singles. And no, as a matter of fact, Callaway will not be credited with a single and Cavage is out at second base and Kristen Butler is gonna argue that call here. Take another look. It looked like the second baseman Morrison had a play. She was called off by Finnegan, the right fielder, who made a diving attempt. And then you see that there, bang, bang, at second base. Kristen Butler immediately asking for help from the other umpires. Our umpire and crew today, Brad Newton, is calling balls and strikes. That was the first base umpire, Mike Smola, who made that call. And the third base umpire is Chris McManus. And I think we might be getting an overturned call here. They're now explaining to Penn State coach Clarissa Crowell. But look there. A bang, bang play. All you needed was the fours, but Lenkavich on second thought got in there safely. So they overturned the call. It is a single for Callaway, and Lenkavich is at second. And that brings up Maddie Lawson. So a couple of bloop singles for Rutgers there. In business here. Here's Lawson, the freshman. From Mabane, North Carolina. Lawson's numbers on the year are 278 average. The freshman's got two home runs and 22 RBIs. Pitch misses away. So we mentioned the gritty win on Sunday for partial, but she was absolutely dominant in Friday's game against Indiana in the series opener, complete game shutout. Seven innings, only gave up two hits, did not walk anybody, and registered seven strikeouts in a six nothing win. As Penn State took two out of three from Indiana, partial was the winner in both of the Penn State victories. The two one to Lawson. Maddie went 0 for 4 in the first game against Maryland on Tuesday, and then 0 for 3 in the second. So looking to snap a mini slump here. Fouls that one straight back, and the count runs full. If you're just joining us, bottom of the first, Penn State and Rutgers, first of this three-game weekend set here in Jersey. 
Ashley Hitchcock with a scoreless first, and now Rutgers threatening on the backs of two bloop singles by Peyton Linkavich and Gabby Calloway. Full count offering is fouled off out of play. And on second thought, it hit the very top of the netting behind the dish, came back in, but obviously a foul ball, so we'll do the full count once more here. Slow change up, freezes Lawson, strike three called. And that is the bread and butter of Bailey Partial, that change up, it was deadly in her two starts against Indiana. And you see right there, it just froze Maddie Lawson. Fastball with good velocity from Bailey Partial. There's that deadly changeup and a very good rise ball as well. First pitch in there for a strike now to the catcher, Katie Winger. Winger, the redshirt junior from Carlisle, Pennsylvania on the season, hitting 221 with seven RBIs. A chance here to extend that. In that first game on Tuesday, Rutgers got plenty of offense, but it was a seven run bottom of the third that did them in against the Terps. They ended up losing 10-7, and then only just one hit in the second game, a 6-1 loss. This one squibbed foul. And the count now one and two. The wind here at the Rutgers softball complex, always a factor. 99% of the time, it will blow straight out to left center field. It's a very hitters friendly park. But a chance for Partial to trade zeros with Ashley Hitchcock. Here's the one, two. There's that good change up and it misses low. Katie Wingert when it combined one for six on Tuesday against Maryland. 2-2 two -two is sky, deep left center field, and it is gone! Three run home run, the first of the year for Katie Wingert, but it's a big time blast, and it puts the Scarlet Knights up early, three nothing. Another look, 2-2, two -two. that was a fastball on the fat part of the plate. And Winger, without a home run on the season before that swing, no longer drilled that one to deep left center field. Rutgers hangs a crooked number here in the first inning. And now the first pitch fouled off by the center fielder, Taylor Fawcett. One swing of the bat from Katie Winger. One of her biggest of the season. Line to first, Black has it, and that's the end of the inning as Fawcett lines out to first, but a three-run blast from Katie Winger. Her first home run of the season puts Rutgers up 3-0 here after the first inning against the Penn State Nittany Lions. We'll be back for the second when we get back on Big Ten Plus. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. And she looks very good here in the opening against this one. Hitchcock has the fastball, the change up, the breaking ball working here so far early on. 2-0 count here to Finnegan, the right fielder. And therefore strike. Maddie Fittigan, the junior from McHenry, Illinois. 
Her numbers on the season, a 160 average, three home runs, 11 runs batted in. And she crushes this one foul. Way out of play. You saw a shot of the field during that last fly ball. Very good amount of fans parked out on the hill behind the left field wall with the big scarlet R painted into the grass. Here's the 2-2. Popped up, should be playable with Stanley. Calls for it, makes the catch as she tiptoes the foul line for the second out of the inning. Batting seventh, left fielder, number 26, Leanna Jones. So Ashley Hitchcock has gotten this Penn State lineup off balance so far, and when you look at this Nittany Lions team, the pitching staff has been great this year. Uh, it's been the bats that have kept them from being even better. 13th best batting average in the conference as there's a swing and a miss from Liana Jones. They've gotten power, they've gotten pop to show for it to drive in runs, but they'd love to boost that team batting average a little bit higher. It comes in at a 266 clip. Liana Jones, the sophomore here with two outs and nobody on. Look out, that one gets away from Winger. Jones, the sophomore from Langhorne, Pennsylvania. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. 1-2. One, Jones, three home runs, 13 RBIs on the year. So only a 250 batting average, but slugging 431. Got a good amount of pop in that bat. Tried to take her upstairs with the rise ball. Jones did not oblige. And now the count is even at twos. Leanna Jones enters today with a mini three game hitting streak. Had a hit in every game against Indiana. Scored a pair of runs as well in that series. And misses again upstairs, so the count runs full. Lexi Black, the first baseman, on deck. If Jones could reach. Here's the 3-2. And she works a walk. Well done that time. Leanna Jones fought off a couple of foul balls, a couple of tough pitches, and works a free pass. First walk issued on the day by Ashley Hitchcock, and that'll give Lexi Black a chance to hit here with two outs in the second. Black, the junior from Omaha, Nebraska, transferred in from Otero Junior College. Way out in front of the first pitch. Last year was her first season in a Nittany Lions lineup. Started 24 games. That one misses, but she has had a breakout year in her junior campaign. Big time power numbers for Lexi Black. Eight home runs on the year, 25 RBIs. She's also got seven doubles to her ledger, so it's a slugging percentage of 564. And she's hit all throughout this lineup, but Clarissa Crowell lately has had her hitting in the bottom of the order, and look out, she takes that one off the leg. So back-to-back -back free passes, the walk, and you see it there right off the top of the right knee. And after two quick outs, now runners at first and second here, and we'll get a trip to the circle. So Ashley Hitchcock just getting a talking to there, just making sure that she is under control here. Bryn Dordell worked out, talked with her right there. And Hitchcock now, the junior, will have to work out of a little bit of self-imposed trouble. Here's the center fielder, Lilia Crawfamel.
Karan Thamel, the senior from Allentown, Pennsylvania, swings at the first pitch and fouls it out of play. Karan Thamel has spent most of the year hitting in that nine hole as a second table setter for Clarissa Crowell. She's got a 219 average, one home run, 12 RBIs, but has great speed. Hitchcock still trying to find the release point on that fastball. It's been missing up a little bit with it here in this second inning. Hundred and twenty six innings so far this year for Ashley Hitchcock. Seventy nine walks. So command has been the biggest thing to work on. Oh, that's picture perfect command right on the black. And the count now one and two. Big spot here early on after the three run blast from Katie Wingert. Tying run here, Crothamel in the second. And that's just on the black, but a smidge off. And the Penn State fan in the crowd who was chirping home plate umpire, Brad Newton, feels like he might have earned that one. Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two runners on, second inning. That's right down the middle, called strike three. Here's Kirsten with Stanley, swings and fouls off the first pitch here in the bottom of the second. Rutgers leading Penn State 3-0 on the heels of the big three-run home run in the bottom of the first from Katie Winger. And it'll be bottom of the order here for the Scarlet Knights to face Bailey Partial here in the bottom of the second. Seven, eight, and nine, that one misses high. With Stanley, the junior from Freehold Township in New Jersey. Her numbers on the year, 159 average with nine RBIs, starting in her 36th game of the season. Takes a strike. She has played first base for most of the year, couple of days off here and there. Fouls off that pitch. With Stanley, one hit and six trips in the doubleheader on Tuesday in College Park against Maryland. There's the one two from Partial. Good change up with Stanley, just able to hold off. They appeal down to the first base umpire, Mike Smola. And he confirms the obvious that she did not go. Boy, that changeup again. It has been a devastating pitch for Partial. You get another look here with Stanley. Yep, she was able to hold off. And now a 2 2. Just off the corner, count runs full. Marshall already with 155 strikeouts on the season. That is 13th most in a single season in Penn State history. This one's popped up behind the circle, coming over as Morrison makes the catch, and there's one gone. Really solid freshman and sophomore campaign for Penn State as Megan Herka takes a strike. Herka, the sophomore, hitting 175 with a home run and two RBIs. But since Clarissa Crowell got here, now in her second season, Bailey Partial has, has become a different animal with some of her pitches. Her changeup has gotten even better. And if she continues on the pace that she's at, she is going to best most of her numbers from her freshman season where she was one of the best rookies in the Big Ten, had 184 strikeouts that year, 11 wins. 
Zerka pops this one up into left field. Jones is under it, and there's two down. Hurra takes a pitch outside. 227 batting average on the year with a couple of home runs and eight RBIs. Smacks that one foul. Hurra came in off the bench, went 0 for 1 in the first game against Maryland, and then helped to spark the Rutgers offense. In the other game, had a pair of hits and four at bats. Beautiful change ups in there for a strike. Count out one and two. Hurra had a double and an RBI in game one back on Tuesday in College Park. But here down in the count, one and two. Swing and a miss. Got her with a fastball. Strike three, swinging. Two innings here in the books on a beautiful Friday here, the penultimate Friday in April, as we have hit the final couple of weeks here of the regular season with the Big Ten tournament less than a month away. Both of these teams vying to get into the Big Ten tournament. Penn State looking for potentially a top six seed. Rutgers, meanwhile, if the season ended today, they would be the last team, the 12th, to get into the Big Ten tournament. A win today would do wonders, and the first pitch comes inside and hits the leadoff hitter, Cassie Lindmark, on the leg. Second hit batter here of the day so far. That one just grazed her across the left kneecap. So we've talked about how for Ashley Hitchcock, command has gotten her into trouble at times this year. Third free pass of this game, and that brings up one of the most dangerous hitters in the Big Ten. Allie Curlin takes a pitch that misses. Reached on a fielder's choice her last time, but again, we go over her numbers. A 336 average, 16 home runs, 38 RBIs. That is third and fourth, respectively, in the Big Ten. Soft liner to second base. That bounces. Lawson gathers, throws the second in time. So it's another fielder's choice as they've been able to limit the dangerous Alley Curlin so far. Landmark out at second on the fielder's choice. Curlin reaches. See there a soft liner. Lawson nearly snagged it in the air. But then quick reactions to throw it over to Sand at second base and get the lead out. So Hitchcock gets through Alley Curlin and here's Michelle Leone, the third baseman. Struck out her first at bat. Pitch misses high. That's right on the corner for a strike. Leone has been moved into the three hole in this lineup by Clarissa Crowell because of how Hot of a bat she's been swinging lately. Two for four on Saturday against Indiana. One hit on Sunday. This one's driven out to right field, but plenty of space for Kobe Hurra, and there's two down. Number 21, the second baseman, Caitlin Morrison. So now with two outs, here's Kaitlyn Morrison. Junior struck out in the first inning. Bounces this one to third. Linkavich has it on the first in time, inning over. So no runs, no hits, one left on, no errors. Ashley Hitchcock, three shutout innings. And the Scarlet Knights will try to improve their lead. They're up 3-0. 
here on this beautiful Friday in Jersey on Big Ten Plus. Off of one of the best pitchers in the Big Ten, and now Kylie Sand pulls back a bunt and takes a strike. Shortstop struck out looking at her first at bat. We didn't give you a chance to go through her numbers, and they are mightily impressive. Sand, a 417 average. That's fifth best in the Big Ten. She's got one home run, 22 RBIs, and also 22 stolen bases. That's second best in the conference. And she's quickly down 0-2. Sand in game one on Tuesday against Maryland. One for three, two walks, two runs scored. And then like most of the Rutgers lineup was held hitless, but did score a run after she walked. And the sophomore from Norco, California. Taps that one through the right field hole for a base hit. And the speed demon, one of the biggest stolen base threats in the Big Ten is aboard. Take another look. Great plate coverage. That was off the plate on the outside corner and was just able to flick it through the right side. And now Bailey Parshall's got to be careful of Kylie Sand over at first base. Here's Peyton Lynn Cavage, singled and scored in the first. Shows bunt, gets it down, right back to Parshall, turns, throws the first, and Sand's trying to go first to third, and they've got her dead to rights. Double play. Heads up defense by Penn State. Got another look here. Partial throws to first. It was the second baseman Morrison then. They had a feeling that was coming. So that's a sack bunt, a 1-4 put out, and then a double play on the 4-6 to six at third base. As Penn State defense, they do not mess around, and that is the mentality of Clarissa Crowell. Defense first. They took a huge jump. They were one of the worst defenses in the Big Ten last year. They are the second best in the conference this season, and they showed why on that last play. Callaway chases a pitch outside. Quickly 0-2. Gabby singled and also scored in the first inning. Came home on that three-run home run by Winger. That was a design play from Kristen Butler. Kylie Sand was going first to third no matter what, but the Nittany Lions were ready for it. 0-2 misses off the plate to Callaway. Gabby's been on a tear here lately. And she takes a change up and rips it through the right side. Going to be a close play at first. The throw from Finnegan not in time. So a couple of singles for Gabrielle Callaway in both trips. She continues to swing a red hot bat as that average climbs closer to 400. That was a change up, but it was up in the zone. And now here's Maddie Lawson. And she rips this one. Fair ball down the left field line. It bounces off the wall. Throw into third, not in time. It's a two out double from Maddie Lawson. And the Scarlet Knights with some more two out magic. They've got both runners in scoring position. And here comes Katie Winger. First pitch swinging, low and in fastball. Plenty of zip, a great hands that time from Maddie Lawson. Just turned on it. So it was the first inning. Rutgers had a couple of bloop singles from LeCavage and Callaway. A bloop, bloop, and then the blast from this woman at the plate. Katie Winger, the junior, hit her first home run in two years in her last trip. And they pound her inside with a fastball for strike one. We mentioned Wingert as a freshman hit 18 home runs. And then a season where that had plenty of promise in the home run department was cut short by COVID. 
Didn't hit any home runs last year, and that was her first of the season in her last at bat. That's off the glove of Lindmark, but Callaway stays put over there at third. And that was it, last at bat, a big fly. That got out of here in a hurry to left center field. She's got a chance to do more damage here. Two runners in scoring position, already a 3-0 lead. Here's the 1-1 from Partial. And that is right there on the inside corner. And this is an already markedly different approach, probably set forth by the head coach, Clarissa Crowell, who has long been a pitching and defensive specialist. Wingert beat him on the outside corner of first at bat, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see another fastball here in on the hands. And they go up the zone, and she chases strike three swinging. So a huge strikeout from Bailey Partial after Katie Wingert Sent a three-run home run over the left center field wall in her first at bat. Partial strikes her out with runners in scoring position to get out of the jam. And now we'll see if Penn State can crack the code of Ashley Hitchcock. She's been very good so far here through the first three innings. And she starts Lauren Marcotte off with a strike. The shortstop popped out to the shortstop in the second inning. And a confirmation from Rutgers SID Kim Zivkovich. Peyton Linkavage does get a sacrifice bunt for the bunt that resulted in a double play last inning. Kylie Sand led off the inning with a single and then tried to go first to third on a sack bunt and was thrown out by this gritty Penn State defense. Off-speed pitches, uh, pitch misses, excuse me, to Marcotte. She went one for three back on Sunday against Indiana. She had three hits in that last weekend series against the Hoosiers and she fouls this one off. Marcotte, the sophomore from Torrance, California. Coming off a freshman campaign in which she only played in 15 games, only had four hits on the season, so it has been a gigantic improvement here in her sophomore season. One of the many that have raised their batting average more than 100 points from last year. She hit just 167 last season. The average coming into today, 270, and she ropes that one up the middle. Second hit of the day for Penn State, and they've got Things working here to start the top of the fourth. Blown away, but Marcotte does a good job of getting a barrel on the ball that time. Waited just long enough to send that one right back through the chute. Marcotte over at first base, only one stolen bag on the year. We'll see if Penn State wants to go a little small ball here. Here's Maggie Finnegan. Not bunting, takes a pitch that misses upstairs. Finnegan popped out to first in her first trip. That one misses outside as well. Finnegan got off to a really rough start this year and she was coming off the bench at times in mid-February and then has really heated up here over the last couple of weeks. Took her average from 119 to 160 thanks to four hits in that weekend series against Indiana. We'll see if that has rejuvenated her season. Finnegan had a really good freshman campaign, although the numbers were a bit limited, only played in less than half the games. And then last year hit 169, so looking to get that average back to where it was in her freshman year. Two-one is skied in the left. Callaway's under it. 
nearing the track as the wind blows it out. Tagging from first is Marcotte, the throw in a second, not in time. So you put that in the books as an F7, and Marcotte moves into scoring position as Liana Jones steps to the dish. Another look. This looks like a routine fly ball, but again, the wind blows so strongly here at the Rucker Softball Complex that Callaway had to keep backing up. Made a pretty nice throw in a second base. Nice pick there by Lawson, but good speed from Marcotte. And that's the first Nittany Lion run there in scoring position. That pitch misses badly to Jones, who walked her first time. Just the second time today that Penn State has a runner in scoring position. Got there in the second inning after back-to-back -back free passes from Hitchcock, but she was able to strike out Lilia Crothamel to end the jam. That's right in there on the inside corner. Strike one. Swing and a miss, one and two. Good baseball and softball blood in the Jones family. Liana's brother Nolan was drafted 55th overall by the Cleveland Indians, now the Guardians back in the 2016 MLB draft. Fouls away that pitch. Mentioned in her first at bat, Jones working on a mini three game hitting streak. Had a hit in every game against Indiana. And has hit safely in six of her last eight games. Down to the count, one, two. Fouled straight back. Got a piece of Wingert, got a piece of home plate umpire Brad Newton. Everybody seems to be okay. Always got to make sure the big fella behind the dish is okay. Three nothing Rutgers here in the top of the fourth. First of this three game weekend set between these Big Ten rivals. One two from Hitchcock. Strike three called on the outside corner. Fourth strike out of the day for Ashley Hitchcock. Second one looking. That was right at the knees on the outside corner. Couldn't have walked to the plate and put that in Katie Wingert's glove more perfectly. Now with two outs, it's down to Lexi Black to try to get the first Penn State run home of the day. She was hit by a pitch in her first trip. Takes one above the belt there for a ball. That one just misses. Count 2 0 now in Black's favor. Penn State started this season with a near massive upset of Missouri in Leesburg, Florida. The Tigers were ranked number 11 in the country. It was scoreless through seven. Penn State scored a go ahead run in the top of the eighth, but then Missouri walked it off in the bottom of the eighth with two runs to beat Penn State 2 to 1. Had a couple of close encounters with UConn, Akron, Pitt. Cleveland State in the beginning of the year, a couple of one-run games. A lot of coaches will tell you they like when you get a couple of nail biters early on in the season. It gives your team a lot of composure heading down the road. And four straight that just missed. Black works her second free pass of the day. And Penn State now with two runners aboard here at two outs in the top of the fourth. Tying run at the plate. In the name of Lilia Crothamel, but it looks like we're going to get a pinch Lilia, hitter here. Lilia Crothamel. So Crothamel will be pinch hit here for in the top of the fourth. And it's a chance for Amanda Mack now to try to tie this game up. Mack, the sophomore from Roseland, New Jersey, coming off the bench here with the Nittany Lions down 3 0. Mack on the season. This is her 12th at bat. She's got two hits on the year. 
Your attention, please. One was a double, and she does have an RBI. Pitch running, number 10, Shelly Rebard, and pitch hitting for Liana Crumbell for Penn State. Number 29, Amanda Mack. Meanwhile, we've got another change. Shelly Rivard will pinch run for Lexi Black at first base. Amanda Mack is the pinch hitter here for Crawthamel. So Clarissa Crowell not messing around, going to a big bat off the bench. Hoping maybe that one swing can tie this up. First pitch in there for a strike. Mack did get a bat in every game against Indiana, did not get a hit. There are two hits in the season. One came on February 26th against Kennesaw State. The other came on March 25th against Maryland. And that's right there at the knees, one and two. Hitchcock. Got a strikeout to end the first inning. Struck out Crawthamel looking to end the second. Looking for another strikeout to get out of a jam. Tying run at the plate. One, two, two outs. Swing and a miss. She got her with a rise ball up and out of the zone. And yet again, Ashley Hitchcock works out of trouble with a big strikeout as she gets Amanda Mack to end the inning. Rise ball kept going. It's so tough to lay off of. Amanda Mack was not able to do it. So no runs in the inning. One hit, no errors, two left on. Just worked out of another jam, preserving the shutout. Scarlet Knights with a chance to extend the lead here, up 3-0. It'll be Fawcett with Stanley and Herka to take on Bailey Partial. Taylor Fawcett fouls off the first pitch. The center fielder lined out to first base back in the first inning. Didn't get a chance to get you her numbers in her first at bat. Fawcett hitting 270. Second on the team with four home runs and 25 RBIs. Junior having a very, very solid campaign for herself. And she goes down swinging there for the first out of the inning. Fifth strikeout of the day for Partial. And some more numbers to impress you from Bailey Partial as you get another look there. Fastball outside corner, tough to do anything with that. This is the 116th appearance of Bailey Partial's career as the first pitch is in there for a strike to first Kirsten with Stanley. Three. She's also making her 73rd start. That is eighth all time in program history. We mentioned Partial had a sensational freshman campaign. It was one of the best freshmen, not only in the Big Ten, but in the Northeast region. As with Stanley sends this to shallow center, Crawthamel coming on to make the catch for two outs. I should say for the second out. Only one out on that play. Partial had 184 strikeouts as a freshman. That was eighth all time in a single season in Penn State history. She's currently got 158 now on the season here. That is now good for 12th best in single season program history. First pitch to Megan Herka is fouled off. The DP flew out to left in her first trip. But now more than 500 career innings pitched under the belt of Bailey Partial. That is also eighth all time in program history and she's got over 550 strikeouts. And that is fifth all time in the Penn State ranks. She's got a chance to move into the top three by the end of her senior year 
in a couple of weeks. Ashley Esparza has 593. Lisa Akamine has 595. That's who she's chasing. Thirty-five wins, forty-three losses for her career. She has been a mainstay in this pitching rotation all four years as a Nittany Lion. Here's the one-two. Herka gets a piece. Partial looking for her sixth sixth strikeout of the game. And she's got it. Herka blown away by a fastball. Six strikeouts indeed for Bailey Partial. So four innings down and Ashley Hitchcock has held this Penn State lineup in check. Take a look at Ashley's line so far. Four innings, two hits, no runs, two walks, two hit batters, but five strikeouts. And she's worked out of the few jams that she's gotten herself into. But it's the top of the order here in the Penn State fifth. It'll be Lindmark, Curland, and Leone. Couple of strikeouts from Hitchcock today. One looking, this was one of the biggest ones. Pinch hitter Amanda Mack got her swinging to end last inning. Some of the big strikeouts of the day for Hitchcock. Lindmark fouls this one off out of play. Cassie fourth in the Big Ten with a 426 batting average. A really intriguing stat from Lindmark this year. She's been hit by a pitch 14 times on the year, and she's only struck out 10. She's got an on-base percentage of 533, and an on-base plus slugging of over 1,200, and she gets hit on the foot. It's the third hit batter of the day, and it's the second time that Lindmark's been hit by a pitch. So she hasn't hurt Rutgers with her bat, but she's now been aboard all three times. This one right off the shoe top, right near the ankle. That is not a great spot to be hit. Not a good spot to be hit by. And now we'll see Lydia Coleman come in and pinch run here for Lindmark. Coleman, who is one of the most popular choices for Clarissa Crowell as a pinch runner off the bench. Allie Curlin. So with Coleman at first, here's Allie Curland. Has bounced into a couple of fielder's choices in her first two trips. Uh, one of the most dangerous bats in the Big Ten. Big for Penn State, number five, Lydia Coleman. Mentioned Curland on the season, 16 big flies, 38 RBIs. Those 16 home runs tied for the second most in a single season in Penn State history. She's chasing Cassidy Bell, who had 20 back in 2013. She's also got 27 career home runs. And she drives this one high in the air into left center field. Fawcett's camped under it and makes the catch. So they have kept Allie Curland in check today, 0 for 3. As the big dangerous bat in the Penn State lineup, yet to register a hit. Third baseman, Michelle Leone. And here's the third baseman, Michelle Leone. Leone 0 for 2, struck out and flew out so far. First pitch. Snap throw to first. That gets passed with Stanley, but not far enough for Coleman to leave the first base bag. 
Another look here outside of the zone, and Wingert said, why not have a go? Snapped one down there. And nice play from with Stanley just to get a piece on that. That could have sailed into right field. Here's the 2-0. In there for a strike at the knees. Leone didn't like that call. But Michelle Leone, another one in this Penn State lineup that was right at the bottom of the Big Ten in offense last year. The average still in the bottom, but their power numbers are up across the board. And Leone's average last year, 197. This year, 259. She pops this one up. And Cavage battles the sun, makes the catch for the second out. And really, really good resolve so far today from Ashley Hitchcock. The leadoff batter has been aboard in all but one inning thus far. Lindmark reached to lead off the first. She reached to lead off the third. Marcotte singled to lead off the fourth. And Lindmark hit by a pitch again to lead off the fifth. So Penn State has had the leadoff runner on four out of five innings. Uh, they have not been able to cash in. Ashley Hitchcock has battened down the hatches when she's gotten in trouble. And it's left to Caitlin Morrison here with two outs in the fifth. See there, struck out in the first, grounded out in the third. The 0-1. This one driven into left, sends Callaway back at the track, at the wall, and she makes the catch. Might have taken a home run away as well. Gabby Callaway reaching for the fence, snags that one at its apex, and it ends the inning. From Morrison, but Gabby Calloway reaching out for the wall, robs what would have been a home run and preserves the shutout for Ashley Hitchcock. And now it's 9-1-2 and two in the Scarlet Knights lineup as they look for more from Bailey Partial, who just made that one mistake today. That's been it. But it cost her three runs. Kobe Hura struck out her first time. 0-1 in there for another strike, 0-2. And that three-run home run from Wingert as well, that was made possible by a couple of bloop singles from Peyton Linkavich and Gabby Calloway. If you were with us from the start, you remember a couple of pop-ups that dunked into shallow center field. And then Wingert, that wasn't a dunk. That was an absolute blast over the left center field wall. First home run of the season. And that has been the difference. That is where we stand, 3-0 Rutgers. One, two. Popped up, foul territory, playable. Leone nearly made a tremendous catch. It was just out of her reach. So again, Rutgers looking to snap a three game losing streak against Penn State after they took the opener last year when these two met against in Happy Valley. Penn State would then win the final three games of the series. Called strike three on the outside corner. Seventh strikeout for Bailey Partial. Want to know how dominant she has been. Seven of her last eight starts have resulted in a win for Penn State. But the offense has not been there to do it for her so far today. Again, the only mistake she's made ended up in a three-run home run against Katie Winger. Back to the top of the order, here's Kylie Sand. One for two with a single. That's in there for a strike. Strike two called. Just missed. Oh. 
Kylie Sand extended that 28 game on base streak to 29 games with her single last at bat. She pops this one up. Marcotte calling for it, makes the catch. There's two down. Baseman, the 29 on game base, uh, excuse me, 29 on base streak for Kylie Sand, one of the longest in the Big Ten Conference. But now here with two outs and nobody on in the bottom of the fifth, it's left for Peyton Linkavich, who is one for one on the day, singled and scored in the first, sacrifice bunt in the third. Marshall has absolutely put that home run behind her. Since then, she has only given up three hits, and all three of them came in the third inning where she worked out of a jam. She has yet to walk a batter. Her command all year has been some of the best in the Big Ten. And Clarissa Crowell not happy with Brad Newton, the home plate umpire, for something there. Granted time, Clarissa Crowell wanted her pitcher to stay in rhythm and keep going. Rucker's trying to slow down her rhythm. That one right down the line. In play, throw on to first is a strong one from Leone and it ends the inning. So Bailey Partial continues to throw up zeros now after that three run home run in the first. Welcome back here, folks, on Big Ten Plus. Pat Boyle, the rest of our crew, wishing you a happy Friday. As we hope maybe an early day for you if you're joining us after work. If you're at work, don't tell your boss. Just keep on watching. We got you covered here. Sixth inning upon us now here at the Rutgers Softball Complex. Scarlet Knights with a 3-0 lead over their Big Ten rivals, Penn State. And it has held up since the first inning when Katie Wingert blasted a three-run shot with two outs off of Bailey Partial. That has been the only run scoring play of the day. And since then, Ashley Hitchcock has preserved the shutout looking for her fourth shutout of the season. This one's fouled back. She's got to go up against five, six, and seven here in the Penn State lineup. Marcotte, Finnegan, and Jones. Last shutout for Ashley Hitchcock, though, came all the way back on March 19th. It was back-to-back -back shutouts when she went five scoreless against Fairfield and then six scoreless against Holy Cross. And that came on back-to-back -back days, March 18th and the 19th. Since then, she has not pitched a shutout, mostly because she has been going up against some of the best offenses in the Big Ten. But Rutgers and Kristen Butler knew that this was finally a break in the schedule, not going up against some of the best teams on paper. As that one's looped into left field, it's a base hit for Marcotte to lead off the sixth. And that's not to discredit Penn State at all. The Nittany Lions have had a fantastic year, 25 and 16 record, a gigantic improvement from just the seven wins last year. But in terms of Rutgers pitching staff getting a break. They went up against the number one offense, the number two offense, the number three offense, and the number four offense in the first four weekends of conference play. And you mix in Maryland and that midweek doubleheader who's a formidable offense on their own. Scarlet Knights with an opportunity here this weekend to break a 12 game losing streak and move up in the conference standings. And after that first pitch bounced in there against Maggie Finnegan, it's going to be a trip to the circle here from Bryn Dordell. Wants to have a chat here with Hitchcock, who has, again, worked so well to get to this point. It is her longest outing since she went six innings in the loss against Nebraska back on April 2nd, which was, considering the opponent, 
how fearsome Nebraska's lineup has been this year and the fact that they have now won 18 games in a row, the fact that Hitchcock only gave up two runs in six innings against Nebraska, that was a heck of an outing. The Rutgers has not won a start for her since their conference opener when they beat Minnesota. She pitched a complete game. That one's in there for a strike against Finnegan, the right fielder 0 for 2, pop out and a fly out today. Popped up right in the circle, just outside the circle, and Cavage takes charge at the last second, nearly bowled her pitcher over in the process but makes the play for the first out. Take another look at this one. McCavage sprinting in the whole time and Hitchcock just able to get out of the way. As a former college pitcher myself, they say pitchers aren't athletes. Well, it's a tough knock, but you usually do want one of your infielders making the catch if they can. And that time when Cavage able to make the play for the first out. So here's Liana Jones, 0 for 1, walking a strikeout today. Nobody working in the Rutgers bullpen. This has been a fantastic start so far for Ashley Hitchcock, who's in search of double digit wins now on the year, looking for her 10th here in her 23rd start of the year. Even if Penn State doesn't score in this inning, they'd love to at least get it back to the top of the order. As this one's roped foul. Jones, the seven hitter, Lexi Black on deck, who has been walked and hit by a pitch. And then we saw the pinch hitter, Amanda Mack, back in the fourth inning. It'd be interesting to see who Clarissa Crowell sends up to the plate if. Penn State can get to the nine spot here in this inning. The 2-1, way upstairs. And that's really been the only issue so far today for Hitchcock. It's been the free passes. She's already walked two and hit three batters. Pitch number 100 on the day here coming up. And it misses. So the tying run comes to the plate in the name of Lexi Black. First base bait, Lexi Black. And now if you're Kristen Butler, big decision potentially coming and it looks like she is going to go to the bullpen right on cue. The lefty, Jaden Vickers will take over. Well, that is a heck of a start from Ashley Hitchcock. She's still responsible for two runners on, but she works into the sixth inning, and the Scarlet Knights have a shutout going. We'll see if Vickers can preserve it. and 49 to third innings and 151 strikeouts. And the first pitch is off speed. That gets a swing and a miss from Black, but both Munners move up on what will likely be called a pass ball. So just like that, Nittany Lions are one base away from getting their first run of the day. Marcotte's at third, Jones at second. Black so far today. No official at bat, she was hit by a pitch and then drew a walk. That one's low in the dirt as well, count one and one. So Ashley Hitchcock can't close the book on her just yet. She is responsible for both of those runners, but five and a third innings, three hits, three walks, and five strikeouts. There's that. 
missile of a fastball that Jaden Vickers is known for, the number one pitch in her arsenal, that deadly fastball that can get up in the high 60s. Rutgers defense is back. They will trade in out for a run. A one, two. And you gotta imagine, if you're Lexi Black, Jaden Vickers is probably gonna stick with the fastball or that drop ball. Her fastball has movement almost every pitch either way, so you can expect it to basically sink and tail. Two, two. Pop foul. Winger goes for a dive, full extension. Not able to get it. Katie Winger came awfully close to going head first into the padded wall. Showing no regard for her own life that time. Putting the ball over the body. Take another look. Looked like it hit the top of that little padded wall here behind home plate. So we'll do the 2-2 again. Off-speed pitch, Black lays off of it, count runs full. There is a base open. And it looks like Lilia Crawfamil will come back into the lineup after she was pinch hit for in her last at bat. But first, the 3-2 from Vickers. And she hits her. Lexi Black has been aboard all three times. Second time today she's been hit by a pitch. That's the fourth hit batter of the day by the Rutgers pitching staff. And now the sacks are full of Nittany Lions. That one right on the tricep. Re-entering the game for Penn State, number seven. I don't want to rub it. So Lilia Crawthamel. And the biggest at bat of the day so far. Bases loaded, one out, top of the six, three nothing lead for Rutgers. First pitch, swing and fouls it off. Crawthamel struck out looking against Hitchcock back in the second. She was pinch hit for by Amanda Mack in the fourth. Crawthamel's numbers on the year, a 219 average, one home run, 12 RBIs. 0-1's in there for a strike, 0-2. And, and talked about if Penn State can get to the top of the order, barring a double play, they will get Cassie Lindmark at the plate. She's on deck. Here's the 0-2. This is outside. Jaden's last appearance came in game one of that doubleheader against Maryland. Rough outing, went three and a third, gave up seven runs. Looking to bounce back here in relief and close this game out. Here's the one, two. Missed away again, two and two. We did get confirmation from Kim Zivkovich in the press box. The official score of today's game, that was a pass ball earlier this inning. Charge to Winger. 2-2 Two -two inside corner, just missed. Vickers trying to smile off the disagreement of that call. She's got to focus up now, it's a full count. That one just off the inside corner. Full count, bags full of Nittany Lions. And the payoff, check swing, did she go? She did not, ball four, Penn State's on the board. <laughs> Tough to appeal there, because you've got the first base umpire, Mike Smola, in between first and second base, so the third base umpire, Charlie Watch McManus, had Cassie the best Newton look. Park. And if Brad Newton wasn't going to ring up Lilia Crawfamil, Tough for anybody to do it. Here's another look at that check swing. Awfully close. But it's a walk and an RBI. And now another hit batter. Lindmark gets hit for the third time today. And 
and this is not looking good right now for Rutgers. Jaden Vickers has come out of the bullpen. Hit by pitch, walk, hit by pitch. And that got Lindmark right on the helmet. And you got to make sure she's OK. She was visibly shaken up by that one. But this has the potential to be one giant storm here for Rutgers because here comes Allie Curlin, one of the most dangerous hitters in the conference. And she's got a chance to either tie this game up or give the Nittany Lions the lead. Back-to-back -back free passes has given Penn State their first two runs of the game. You can close the book on Ashley Hitchcock, but right now Jaden Vickers trying to just keep this lead intact. First pitch, fastball right by her. Curland, three at-bats against Hitchcock. Bounced into two fielder's choices and flew out to center last inning. This is her first at bat against Vickers. Lefty versus lefty. Curlin, 16 home runs on the year, 38 RBIs. Here's the 0-1. Bounces it through the right side. It's a base hit. One run scores. Here comes the go-ahead run. Two-run single for Allie Curlin. And Penn State grabs the lead. Rutgers defense forced to come in, and that is a seeing eye single for Allie Curland, a two run single. Penn State trailed the entire game, but here in the top of the six, they erupt for four runs with the help of a couple of walks, and then the two run single from Curland, and that will be that for Jaden Vickers as Ashley Hitchcock will come back into the game to try to finish the inning she started. As she goes back to her starter here to try to stop the bleeding. Here's Michelle Leone. Swing and a miss. Runners at the corners, one out. Leone is the eighth Nittany Lion to come to the plate here in this inning. The batter's third base for Michelle Leone. And so far in this inning, just two hits, but four runs. Two hit batters and two walks. See Leone 0 for 3 today. These are the kinds of games that Rutgers was hoping to prevent from getting away from them. Now after leading for basically all of five and a half innings, now they've got to play catch up. Here's the 2 1. Missed off the corner. Four free passes here alone so far in this inning, and in danger of making it five. Caitlin Morrison's on deck. She was robbed of a home run by Gabby Calloway in left field to end last inning. This one's popped up. Sand trying to block the sun makes the catch for the second out. So an 0 for day, 0 for 4 for Michelle Leone, and that'll bring up Caitlin Morrison. Second baseman, Caitlin Morrison. Right now, if you're Rutgers, things have pretty quickly snowballed downhill, but an opportunity to just keep this out of one run deficit and give your offense a chance to get you right back into the game because Bailey Partial has been on the bench for over 15 minutes right now at this point. Been a long time since she was pitching in the bottom of the fifth. So you wonder how that could potentially affect her when she comes back out for the home half of the sixth. But if you're Ashley Hitchcock, you got to keep it to just the four runs here in this inning. 
Morrison 0 for 3, we mentioned. Robbed of a home run by Callaway her last time. And she sends it near the same spot again, down the left field line. This time it's way foul. Callaway gives it a slide for good measure. Whole bunch of zeros on the scoreboard, except for the bottom of the first and here in the top of the sixth. Three run home run from Katie Winger at the bottom of the first. Four runs here for Penn State in the top of the sixth. Penn State looking to keep the pressure on the teams ahead of them in the Big Ten standings they came into today. Currently tied for the sixth spot in the conference standings with Ohio State and just one game back of Wisconsin. This one's golfed in a deep right. Hura moving back into the gap, makes the catch. And it finally ends the inning. But nine Nittany Lions come to the plate. Quickly, Chase Jaden Vickers brought Ashley Hitchcock back in. Allie Curlin, two-run single, has given the Nittany Lions a 4-3 lead. But it is the heart of the order here for the Scarlet Knights in the bottom of the sixth to go up against Bailey Partial. Bailey Calloway, Lawson, and Wingert. Abby Calloway, the Big Ten's leader in RBIs. Two for two so far with two singles. Big swing and a miss there on the changeup. 0-2. Callaway has been red hot as of late. Six hits in her last three games. But she strikes out there. Got her with a fastball for the first out of the inning. Here's Maddie Lawson. One for two with a double. Good change up in for a strike. Partial has mixed her speeds extremely well today. This one's popped up right on the edge of being out of play. And that time, Lindmark not able to make the catch. Tough view there. You got a battle of sun. You got the netting right there. That one, I'm not sure if that hit the netting on the way down. Either way, Lindmark not able to secure it, so it's 0-2. Rutgers a chance to get back to 500 today and get that second win in conference play. This has been an upstart Penn State team that is quickly rebuilt under Clarissa Crowell. This one smacked in the center. On comes Cawthamel, lays out and makes the catch. Head first diving grab from Lilia Cawthamel takes away a hit. Lays out and grabs it right on the scarlet R to take away a hit from Maddie Lawson. Two outs now, here's Katie Winger. Responsible for the big blow today from the Scarlet Knights offense, a three-run home run back in the first inning. Two and oh now. You're Katie Wingert. Maybe you're thinking of one thing and one thing only here. Try to get the ball in the air to left field and see if you can tie this game up. See if she gets a changeup. 2-0 count. Misses in the dirt, 3-0. In the dirt, in the turf. Baseball team taking on a very good Iowa team. Rutgers baseball team that is one of the hottest in the country. Softball, we've got you covered here all weekend. 3-0 in there at the knees for a strike. We'll be back here again tomorrow, 3 p.m. Right here on Big Ten Plus, Rutgers and Penn State, and then they will finish off the weekend proceedings on Sunday, first pitch, one o'clock on Sunday afternoon. And 
from 3-0 and oh now to 3-2. and two. Wingert didn't like the call, thought she could induce a ball four call from Brad Newton, but now it's three balls, two strikes, two outs. Partial looking to register her fifth straight scoreless inning. And that one misses outside, so all that for nothing. A walk to Wingert. Tying run on base for Rutgers, and that'll bring up Taylor Fawcett. And we'll get a pinch runner now. So here's Chavez, first at bat, goes after the first pitch, swings right through it. Leilani Chavez on the season. This is her 67th at bat. She's got 14 hits, good for a 212 batting average. Four RBIs on the season. Something in the gap could tie this game up. Although Chavez on the year, all 14 of her hits have been singles. But she would have to get a hold of something. Lefty versus lefty. Pops this one up out of play. And Bailey Partial is a strike away from getting to the seventh inning, a game in which she has been trailing for essentially five innings. But the Nittany Lions gave her a big four spot in the last half, and now she's trying to preserve the lead. The one-two, swing and a miss. Got her to chase a rise ball for strike three. First inning, but they now lead 4-3. It'll be Marcotte, Finnegan, and Jones against Hitchcock, who departed last inning, then came back in to keep this at just a one-run game. So far, Ashley Hitchcock's line, six innings pitched, and just two runs allowed. So Marcotte's line, she's got a pair of singles so far today. This one is ripped down the left field line. It would have been gone if it was fair, but it's well foul. She does, that's down the third baseline and it squeaks through under Nitlinkavich's glove. And we'll see how they rule that because that was a tough play regardless. And she shows bunt, pulls it back. They do, and Finnegan gets it down. Linkavich thought about going a second, then takes the sure out at first. First pitch curveball in there for a strike. No one foul back. Well, the four times that these two met last year. Rutgers had trouble putting Penn State away in just about every game. The first game of that series last year, Penn State made it a nail biter at the end. As there's a swing and a miss, strike three. Rutgers led three to one, and that one going in the bottom of the seventh. Penn State got a run home, got the tying Bruce run State. on base. But they were not able to cash in as Ashley Hitchcock Got the win in that one. Jaden Vickers closed it out last year in game one. But then Penn State came from behind to beat Rutgers 10 to three, a game in which Rutgers scored two runs in the first inning, but then it was all Nittany Lions after that. Penn State beat Rutgers four to two in game three last year. And then Rutgers had a three nothing lead going into the bottom of the fifth in the fourth and final game last year back on April 10th and Penn State scored the game's final four runs. It's an, almost an identical script to here today. In there for a strike on Lexi Black. She's reached all three times, but she's done it without swinging the bat. Hit by a pitch in the second, walked in the fourth, hit by another pitch in the sixth. Here's the 1-1. One, one. 
This is upstairs from Hitchcock, who has now thrown over 125 pitches today. So she'll be expected to ice up. Jaden Vickers will most likely get the start tomorrow, and I'd imagine we'd see Hitchcock back on Sunday. Here's the 2 1. 3 and 1 now. Lilia Crawthamel on deck. Huge insurance run in scoring position in the name of Lauren Marcotte over at second base. This one pulled foul. Count full. Look ahead for these two teams. Again, we told you we'll be back here tomorrow, 3 o'clock, first pitch on a Saturday. And then Sunday we'll wrap things up here this weekend with first pitch at 1 o'clock. For Rutgers after that, it remains a home stand. They will welcome in Drexel next Tuesday at 4 o'clock before heading off to Indiana next weekend to take on Purdue. And then the final weekend of the season, final regular season weekend, Rutgers welcomes in Michigan State, May 6, 7, and 8. The 3-2, walked her. And that's been the killer today for Rutgers. Didn't hurt them at all, all these free passes until the sixth inning. Sir, Penn State got four runs on only two hits, but four walks. And today, they've got five walks, and they've also got five hit batters. So 10 free passes in all. Here's Crawthamel. RBI walk with the bases loaded last inning. Meanwhile, looking ahead for Penn State. Again, they'll finish the weekend here in Piscataway. Then they'll go to Columbus for a midweek doubleheader Tuesday at Ohio State. And then they welcome in Wisconsin next weekend. That'll be a huge series. Two teams right next to each other in the conference standings. This one slapped into left. Callaway coming on, makes the catch, and the inning is over. No runs. One hit, no errors, two Nittany Lions left on base. Last licks here on the first game of this weekend set. Chance here for Rutgers on Big Ten Plus, trailing Penn State 4-3, a game in which they led 3-0 all the way into the sixth inning. They have been shut down since by Bailey Partial. Six innings, six hits, just that three-run home run against Katie Wingert in the first inning. She has been dominant since. One walk on the day and nine strikeouts, looking for her 15th complete game of the season here in her 20th start. And looking for win number 17 on the year. In there for a strike, it'll be seven, eight, nine in the Rutgers lineup with Stanley, Herka, and Hura due up for the Scarlet Knights as they look to snap this 12-game losing streak. Right, they're gonna need at least a run to keep this game going. Bounce straight back with Stanley so far today, 0 for 2, popped out in the second, flew out in the fourth. Marshall looking for three straight complete games. Had two over the weekend against Indiana. One of them was a shutout and a gem. Called strike three with Stanley caught looking. Double digit strikeouts now for Bailey Partial. Fastball right on the outside corner. She has worked the black on both sides of the plate beautifully today. Here's Megan Herka, 0 for 2. First pitch change up at the top of the zone in there for a strike. So the last time Partial had double digit strikeouts, she got to go back to March 16th when she had a complete game shutout with a dozen strikeouts against Pitt. There's the fastball going slow to fast. Herka held up on the check swing, one and one. And that is just a 
one-two punch that she has used to perfection all season and all day today. The changeup followed by the fastball and vice versa. She's kept the Rutgers hitters off balance. Goes back to the fastball. Herka couldn't hold up and it's one and two. Kobe Hurra due up to be on deck, but it looks like Rutgers could be going with a pinch hitter. Big pitch coming here. Parshall gets the sign. Off speed pitch, strike three. 11 strikeouts for Bailey Parshall. And the Scarlet Knights down to their final out. Beautiful changeup. That's been the bread and butter. That's been why she's been one of the best pitchers in Penn State history. And 11 strikeouts today moves her up to 164 on the season. That is top 10 all time in a single season in Penn State history. Four hits and 14 at bats on the season, one of them being a home run. And this is a gigantic opportunity for the sophomore from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Pinch hitting here for Kobe Hura. Punk, the final out potentially here for the Scarlet Knights. She also represents the tying run. Takes a strike. One ball and a strike. Penn State looking to win another series. This would be a huge first step in doing so. They won the series against Indiana. They did drop two out of three against Michigan, but that's not a bad result. And now Scarlet Knights down to their final strike. They swept Purdue in the beginning of April. This Penn State team getting hot at the right time and they're a strike away from win number 26 on the season. The one, two, just off the outside corner. Partial looking to strike out the side here to end it, looking for her 12th strikeout. Punk looking to keep it alive for Rutgers. And just misses with the changeup. The count runs full. 12 strikeouts would tie a season high in the 12 strikeouts that she had against Pitt. She did that twice against the Pitt Panthers. Kylie Sand begging to get up, but she won't. Strike three, swinging, ball game over. Penn State comes from behind. They score four runs in the top of the sixth, and it's another complete game gem from Bailey Partial. She strikes out the side in the seventh, strikes out the final four batters she faced, and it's a complete game victory for Bailey Partial with a dozen strikeouts.